So thank you guys for tuning in with us to Sincerely Nay Podcast meets Kicking It With Nay on WXUT. Have a special guest today, Queen Shoma. Thanks for having us. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for coming. It's been a long time waiting. Yes. (laughs) Excited. So tell the people more about you. Okay. So my name is Chama. I am originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm here in Toledo. I went to UT. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in communications. I graduated in 2020. Outside of all of that, I'm pretty much a jack of all trades. So I have a modeling agency. I'm a music artist. I have a lot of different talents. Um, so we can get into all of them today. <laughs> but yes, yeah, a lot of stuff that I do. I'm also here with my manager. I can introduce him stuff too. Uh, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? My name is Justice. Um, I'm her manager. Uh, basically, that's, so that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get into a little bit more about him later as well. So like you mm-hmm, said, you mm-hmm. go to UT, you have your own modeling agency, you rap as well as you have a YouTube channel. So right. how do you juggle like all of those things, especially with you being a student previously? How are you managing all of that? I think there's a big difference between now and when I was a student. As a student, I had to basically water down a lot of things I wanted to do. Um, How I juggled it was definitely a planner more than anything, Um, but just always doing things that were activating all of my interests, but also staying in tune with my goals as well as education at the time. Now that I'm out of school, it's pretty much the same thing. However, it's like really a job. So people don't sometimes see YouTube as a real job, but it is a real job. Even before I came here, I was writing scripts. Um, People sometimes don't anticipate how much that goes into running a business, just being an entrepreneur. So a lot of my time goes into my modeling agency as well. And then as an artist, it's kind of an all day when you feel inspired to write. Something I like to do is wake up, try to write, you know, maybe two minutes of just anything that comes to mind so that people know that, hey, she's active, she's writing. So it's a lot to juggle. I think it's just planning, organizing, having also a manager, a team of people that all have like-minded goals that can help you, Um, and then just believing in yourself, of course. A lot of times as young women and young people in general, we don't think that we can do a lot, but I do a lot, and, you know, I, I have a lot of prestige in it as well, so... It's hard, but I do it. <laughs> you do a lot. You handle it. Well, I'm like, oh, she does. You do do a lot. So Thank you. How did you start your modeling agency? What made you start that? Okay, so I had a friend back in, let's say, 2020. He asked me if I could have models for his music video, him and his music group. Prior to that, I did do all of the fashion shows at UT. So I did... BSU, I did APA, I did UT Stylist, I did Natural Heritage. I was either in it, a part of it, judged for it, coached it some way, somehow, um, especially for APA, which is African People's Association. So from like 2016, when, when I was a freshman, I came in 2015, but from 2016 up until what would have been 2020 before COVID, um, I did all of the fashion shows. And then when he asked me, I was like, yeah, I'll ask some girls that I know from UT, but they really weren't trying to do it, even though he was going to pay and everything. I'm like, "Mm, maybe there is a market for girls who just want to get into that. Because I know in bigger cities outside of Toledo, Detroit, especially, um, people model is like a thing. And I feel like at UT and in college, there's like this social hierarchy of who is who, who's cool. You know, you have your athletes, you have your Greeks, you have the people that are just involved. But the models at UT was also kind of like a thing. Like if you were a model or on the dance team, I feel like you were low key, somebody that people knew. So I was like, okay, there's a, there's an interest for it. So it started with somebody asking me for models to do a music video. And then I was like, okay, I need people. So I just started putting out flyers. Um, I had a friend at the time too, who helped me and we kind of just garnered some local talent and then it turned into what it is now. So, Yeah, and I see you guys are doing uh, multiple events in the community and I know you mentioned yep. COVID. Like, how did you transition, I guess, from all the craziness with COVID right. and dealing with your model agency? It was hard because at first we definitely had to implement the testing. We, we couldn't go to any shoots without having a negative test. Um, but now that things have kind of lightened up, it, it made it a lot easier to you know, have group events. Um, Initially, we were only doing group photo shoots, even through COVID, like I said, the testing. Um, And then it turned into a lot more individualized shoots and doing bookings and having individual clients, such as music artists or um, photographers, just book the models to do whatever it is that they wanted. So 
it's been good so far. Now that COVID's done, it's kind of, <laughs> or not done, but just a little bit easier. It's better. It's crazy. We, it's kind of crazy. We still stuck. What, 2020, 2019? Yeah. <laughs> but your YouTube channel yes. almost has 230,000 subscribers. Yes. So that's great as well. Yes. I know you've been doing it for a few years. So Long what time. made you get into YouTube and like, how do you incorporate that with your music, your modeling? Right. Um, I started YouTube because Although, yes, I am from Philly, when I was going to high school, I was living in a town called York, Pennsylvania. Very small, probably the same size as Toledo, if not smaller. So um, it was really nothing to do. I think Toledo has more to do than York, PA, just being real. (laughs) So there was really nothing to do. And um, I became like an Internet junkie at the time because, I mean, that's the only thing you can do. And we would have one house computer. I would just get on it after school, MySpace, Facebook. I was always on the Internet, especially Tumblr as a high schooler. And then I would watch YouTube videos, especially at that time, like beauty influencing was like really big. It is now, too. But Mm -hmm. back then, I feel like that's the only niche that women had was the beauty influencing. And so I started off with that, just doing hair reviews and hair tutorials, styling, things of that nature. And then I watched a a lot of YouTubers that did college related Mm -hmm. content at the time and I was going into college because I started it 2014. So I was a senior in high school. And then when I graduated in 2015, obviously my interests are like college. So I'm watching all this college stuff. I'm like, when I get to college, I want to vlog too. And that was really popular and still low key is. Um, And I would watch, you know, those content creators. And I started doing that. When I got to UT, I think my first vlog was like, it didn't really like get any views at first. But my second vlog went dumb. Like it did like 100K in like a few, like a week or two. I'm like, okay, I got (laughs) something here. So then the first vlog started going dumb too. So I was just like, okay, let me do the college vlog thing. And then after my first year, I did a lot of college advice. And that kind of also put me on. And then... I was doing more college-related stuff up until about 2018. That's when I started getting into the social commentary, which is what I'm primarily known for now. And um, I just one time watched a video was about colorism. I don't know why it struck a nerve to me. I was just like, this is super interesting, especially because this is a conversation that I've always wanted to have but didn't know how to verbalize it. And then I decided, hey, how about you make a video? And that video did pretty good. And then it just kind of transitioned from college blogger into social commentator, which is what I'm primarily known for now. I feel like there's people that watch me that don't know that I even started off as a beauty influencer. But yeah, to be where I'm at now with the social commentary kind of created a huge platform for me to talk about a lot of the issues that we as young black women face. Um, And then I kind of intertwined the music, like you said, and the modeling into it because um with the music, I have a platform to showcase, you know, what mm-hmm. I can do as well as kind of converse about what's going on with hip hop and women in hip hop and then women in society, which is like my modeling agency. So all of the topics that I'm known to talk about kind of end up being things that I do in real life, too. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's businesses all around just out of YouTube. It kind of sprouted into everything I do outside of YouTube. You're kind of creating your own space, like you said, about yeah. colorism on your YouTube channel. Do yes. you just like... Other social media platforms, I know you're big on Instagram. What about, like, TikTok? How do you feel, like, that transition from, like, everybody going on TikTok to, right. like, Instagram Reels? And I was, like, kind of crazy. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not going to lie. I'm, like, an old lady to the TikTok stuff. Like, I'm still, like, having to... I don't. I have, like, four videos on there, but somehow I keep getting followers. But I just, like, as of the last week or two, put my TikTok, like, in my YouTube channel. Like, at the end of my channel, you can click on it. And I didn't even have that in there up until literally a few weeks ago. So that's probably why I've been getting a lot of followers. But I think TikTok, honestly, with it being like the most, I guess you could say, popular social media network now, um, they kind of put Instagram out of business a little bit. Or I think Instagram is trying to adapt, but they don't know what to do. But I, I enjoy TikTok. I think you can get wrapped up in it. Real yes, fast. I'd yes. be on there scrolling for a while. I'm like, hold on. Yes. It's two hours that went by. So, yes, definitely. I just know some people have been talking about, it, I guess, like it's different from like a user side versus an influencer side. Right. Like how different it is, like definitely. using those multiple apps, keeping track of everything, let's top of all everything you do. Like, do you right. manage like all your social media? I know you have management. Do you do it for? Like your queen team, do y'all have people like allocate for that or is it all uh, your manager? Like I said, I wear a lot of different hats and one of that is doing all the stuff for QTM, doing all the stuff for YouTube. Luckily, I have somebody, which is Justice, who helps with the music side, which in all honesty has probably the most uh, intricacies 
that you can really do at this moment. So it's not just having somebody who comes with me to an interview, but mm -hmm. somebody who books your studio time, somebody who gets in contact with um, the people that are interviewing you, somebody who is trying to promote you to this event and have you perform here. So he helps a lot on that end, I'm not going to lie. But with QTM and YouTube, that is all me. I don't even have a staff that I can say helps with social media or promotion. I have friends and I have people that do contribute, but it's really just me for the most part. But I, I like it though. Like it's a, it's it's work for me, so I don't really find it to be too hard. It's just a lot of work. <laughs> oh, of course, but it pays off. It's paying off. Definitely. For you, it looks like so. What do you think? Like I know some people are asking like the influencer lifestyle versus working a nine to five. Right. So how is that different? You know, like that is your full time job. Right. Basically. So how do you? I guess, what's your perspective on that? Working versus somebody yeah. trying to be an influencer? I would say a lot of people glamorize the in entrepreneur, influencer life. And I think the cutest part of it that you see is only on social media. I don't think I ever have a day off, really, unless I choose to say, hey, I'm just not going to do anything today. But even at that, someone is still calling or texting or inquiring about something. Even when I woke up today, I'm like, okay, I just had my podcast today. <laughs> but it's just like, nah, you have to do this edit for this photo or you have to make sure you're promoting this and that and the third. So I would say the difference is Nine to five is like you just have your set hours and you can go home and say, OK, I don't have to touch that job until tomorrow or whenever I come back. An influencer is 24 seven nonstop or entrepreneur is 24 seven nonstop. A lot of people put a lot of blood, sweat and tears literally into whatever it is that they do. And with the nine to five, it's almost like you're guaranteed whatever your paycheck is, your benefits or whatever. An influencer, you're not really guaranteed anything unless you produce it. Mm -hmm. So. I do think entrepreneurial lifestyle is glamorized. It's a lot of hard work and, you know, diligence that goes into it versus it being a nine to five. Not to say that, you know, you don't work hard at your mm -hmm. job, but it's just set hours versus always being on the clock with whatever it is that you're pursuing. I definitely agree with that. I think people see now, like, especially like clothing brands, or mm -hmm. like rapping or mm -hmm. I'm going to be Jada way down. Exactly. Like, it's just so easy to do. I'm exactly. like, <laughs> no, it's stressful because <laughs> I'm trying to do it. I'm like, Child. <laughs> Especially as a college student, I mean, people would say, oh, you don't need college, which in a sense, you may not need it. It's great to have it. Um, but in college, I had to tone down a lot of the stuff that I wanted to do because school came first, obviously. And now that I'm out of college, it's like, oh, I kind of miss being in college and being kind of, really? you know, hey, this is all I'm doing right now. And just having tidbits of the influencer life. Now it's like, hey, you're doing this every day. People recognize you. People may not like you for what you say or do, what you post. Um, and then how much, again, how much work you put into it. So mm -hmm. sure, sure. So, how did you start into your music? I mean, you, oh, Auntie House, I saw the yes. artist of the month. Thank you. <laughs> Honestly, and I don't mean to shade nobody, but I just got tired of seeing just, I could say, a certain aesthetic being the only aesthetic within female rap and hip hop because I'm somebody that grew up listening to a lot of music and of course I take a liking to female artists being that I'm a woman myself mm -hmm. and for the longest I kind of felt like okay we're changing into this certain aesthetic and it's cool and I like it especially being a college student I'm like yes I'm with all of that you know what I'm saying turn up but then it became one trick pony it became everybody's doing the same thing. And I remember a few years ago, I think Jermaine Dupri made a comment and he said that, you know, right now in female rap, it's almost like strippers rapping. Who's the best stripper rapping? Yeah. And people were so mad, but I'm just like, I don't really think he was telling a lie. Like he kind of was making sense. So with me, I've always been pretty lyrical in a sense where I write poetry um, from a young age and I'm really good at writing. That's my probably my number one academic uh, oh talent is writing and speaking um, and then I was just like Chama you can probably do rap but I didn't really have any motivation let alone didn't think I could do it till I met my manager Justice and he was like hey I'm going to the studio I need a female part for this song you want to come went to the studio I was there for my like little maybe two minutes of what I needed to do, but I was there for the whole session. I just observed, and I'm like, I, I really like this. You know, this is something right. I could do. So after that, it turned into, well, let's get her back in the studio and see if she could do anything else. And then mm -hmm. every single engineer that we recorded with was like, you hot. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? You pop it, so keep going. So then I just kept going, and now we're here. So when I did Auntie House, it was like the debut of 
yeah, I'm taking this seriously now. Y'all see me. And it was so well received, not only by my fan base, but people that didn't even know that I had an inclination for rapping or writing. And then here we are now. So. So do you have any projects coming up in the future, you know, yeah. kicking off? Yeah, you expected? want to talk about the projects we got? Um, yeah, we got some projects coming up. Uh, we're going to keep y'all, we're not going to give you guys too much, you know, at first, but it's been a minute since we dropped our first song, so that doesn't mean we haven't been working hard, but um, we've been working, like, you know, really, really back-to-back -back in the studio, you know, so we got some Afrobeat songs coming up. We have some more rap music coming up, because I know y'all love to hair trauma drilling you know what i'm saying and um yeah just bars bars coming up you know what i'm saying the whole nmp everybody okay okay that's what's up that's what's up mm -hmm. so do you are you did you say yourself a rapper or just an artist can you sing or? i've been working on singing actually i think i can sing decently um i'm trying to get into some more voice lessons singing lessons because it is an art people don't realize your voice is truly an instrument and that's one of the things i've learned in being an artist is like your voice is an instrument. You got to know how to do it. People think you could just go to the studio and just write what you got, but you really got to perform while you're in there unless, you know, it's not going to sound good. So um, I would just at now just call myself a rapper with a little bit of singing talent like that gets sprinkled in, but pretty much primarily a rapper. Okay, okay. Do you think? Oh, we, you we, she's, she's a natural singer. You know what I'm saying? She has a natural, really, a really good natural voice. And um, CJ Mack, shout out to CJ Mack. We about to shout hop out. into some singing classes with him because he got one of the best voices in the city. But uh, after that, I'm pretty sure she's about to go crazy with it. Mm -hmm. okay, so, so do you have like any set goals for this year? I know you're juggling like all these things. Like what, I guess, do you have any set for you on that? Yeah, I would say if I was to break it down between YouTube, music, and QTM, my main YouTube goal is to really cultivate my fan base in person. I feel like I've been behind the camera just doing mainly podcasts on my channel. Um, I kind of eradicated my face from my channel. Some people don't even know what I look like because I don't get on camera anymore. Um, but I want to, you know, come back in a more physical sense. I'm thinking about even doing like a live a commentary, you know, event or something mm -hmm. where I can meet up with my subscribers in the city and we talk about the same topics I talk about on my channel, but just, you know, as a group, kind of like a panel, but, mm -hmm. you know, we're there. I'm um, in terms of QTM. We just finished our second season. It was very successful. Shout out to all the QTM ladies. Um, my goals moving forward is just to, you know, have more models, build the brand, get a lot more involved in the community, especially. And, um, just continue to grow the brand because I think it's a undercover Toledo gem that people may not realize is popping right now. But in like the future, I think it'll be something that's really incorporated in Toledo culture if, if done right. And then for music, honestly, I, I want to be on XXL eventually. That's my main goal. Maybe next year. But I think once we drop all the stuff that we've been working on, because we truly have been working, people comment every day like, Chama, when are you going to drop that song? When are you going to drop it? We've been hearing it. And it's just like, trust me, we've been behind the scenes working, trying to make sure that whatever we put out is of quality and um, what the people are asking for. A lot of people kind of see that I have the talent to do it, but I've been trying to figure out what is going to be Chama's debut. And mm -hmm. that's the question that we've been answering behind the scenes. So you guys will see it very soon. Great, great things in store. So I know you're talking about uh, meeting with your fan base for that panel. Yeah. Do you feel like you have, like, a certain, I would say, like, region or, like, where most of your followers are based? Mm -hmm. Are they Toledo or your hometown or yeah. kind of spread out all over the place? On YouTube, you can see your analytics with demographics and stuff. So apparently my fan base is mainly um, on the East Coast, which is where I'm from. So New York, shout out to New York, Philly, the whole DMV, so Baltimore, um, D.C., Virginia, and then Texas, which it makes sense because the biggest amount of Nigerians and Nigerian Americans are in those areas, New oh, York, wow. D.C., DMV, slash mm -hmm. Texas. So it makes sense that a lot of my fan base is there. However, if I do the live panel, I probably will start with Texas because, like, I, I love Texas. I want to live there. I want to move there. Um, and then just kind of go on tour if I can. It's going to take some time, but my fan base is really spread out. I went to Canada um, I was in Toronto a few weeks ago for a wedding. Unbeknownst to me, I have a fan base out there. I met about five, maybe seven different subscribers oh. individually that said that they're subscribed to my channel. So I was in awe because I was like, huh? I'm in another <laughs> country and people still recognize me. So it shows the impact that I have been having um, and that the fan base is there to do all these things that I've been trying to do. 
Because I think it's weird. Like, at least for me, it's like people may know you that you don't even know know you. And then they see you outside and like, oh, right. wow. Like, okay, my work is paying off. Yes, exactly. In person versus on camera. And then for a queen team as well, I think that's great because, like, we don't have... I was just talking about my friend, actually. She was doing modeling, like, in high school for, like, John Casablanca or mm-hmm. one of those. Like, yeah. We don't have, like, a black agency or a right. lot of black girls who want to pursue, like, a place for them to go besides, exactly. like, the people in the mall. So I think that's great as well. Yep. And a lot of people have told me, um, with working with the models over for a year, over a year, um, they've told me that most times when they go to, you know, local agencies, they just get casted as an urban model, mm-hmm. which is not a bad thing. However, there's a lot of girls that want to broaden their horizons and be able to do different things. Through QTM, of course, we are urban models, of course. However, I want these girls to understand, hey, it's not just about being cute on Instagram and taking Instagram cute pictures. You guys want to broaden your horizons. So I try to use my college education, my connections that we both have, um, and, you know, give them the opportunities that it's not just the stereotypical look for a black model. There's other things that you guys can do as well. So That's always great to focus on, having, you know, your bag of tricks. Right. <laughs> and then for you rapping, like, do you, have you, like, experienced, like, any, I guess, like, backlash or, like, sexualization from like working with people or how do you think like the industry hip-hop industry and sexualism is like affecting you definitely definitely i would say me personally because i i'm not gonna lie i'm five foot ten you know say i'm a tall girl most people get intimidated a little bit by me and my presence especially because they think i'm harsh because of my youtube channel but trust me i'm very nice and understanding um but sometimes i feel as though because of that there's a over sexualization just because of whatever people see um i would say the answer is yes i did want to address that when i did auntie house you know a lot of people that was very big and bigger than i thought it would go especially for the fact that i'm in toledo and i'm not from toledo i don't know that many people here um and there were comments about like oh you're dre- how you're dressed and what you look like and stuff like that and i was just like I think what being a female artist, especially in hip hop, it, it kind of is peanut butter and jelly with the whole, you know, female rapper and the sexualism. It's just on ter- on terms of how you want to go about it, as well as just drawing the line in the stand of how far you go and how far you don't go. People appreciate sexy. There's nothing wrong with it, especially when you're young and, you know, you hot. You know, I work out, you know, I got a nice body. So, um, but it's just... Figuring out the happy medium for you and your fan base. I think people appreciate that happy medium if it's done correctly. And that's honestly what I'm trying to do. I'm not saying be modest. Okay, you don't have to be going to grandma house every day. But at the same time, you know, just throw in your personality, which is what I've been trying to do as well. So I think that's good. I'll differenti- differentiate you between everybody else. Like, right. Almost like sex sales. Like, I will... Like the Detroit rap page, yeah. it's like, oh my like, Jesus, like it's everybody almost it does, looks like the same. It's sex sells, it really does, but it's like sometimes I feel like some women aren't thinking about setting themselves apart because yes, you can do something and you know that's going to make you money, but I think what makes you money or makes you stand out or what makes you have a legacy is standing out mm-hmm. and not you know following the trends all the way. We're all young, so we're going to follow trends. We're going to get you know, encompassed by what we see on social media. However, you just have to know that happy medium, like I said. Just be yourself. Which exactly. You great. <laughs> Thank you. And then for justice, you can tell us a little bit more about you. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Who are you? All right. So my name is Justice. Like she just said, um, I'm the manager of everybody in NMP. Um, uh, it's a brand that we that we um, thought of. Me and a couple of people in our group, we thought of. Uh, about four or five years ago, six years ago. So it's um it's been a long time coming, but we implemented music in it. Um, it's an acronym that stands for No More Pain. You know what I'm saying? So it just means like we just thought of it like No More Pain. You know what I'm saying? Like we're gonna get to the top. You know what I'm saying? So that's about with that. Um, uh, we joined with Trauma. We have uh, we joined with Dave Jones. He's a um. He's a uh, he's a college student in St. Louis right now. I think he's a traveling nurse. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we got trauma. She just explained about herself. YouTuber going crazy, super active. We got Justin Young, um, going crazy, dope rapper from Chicago. He's a fast paced rapper, but he is you know he could he could alternate a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying? Very smart dude. He graduated also from University of Toledo. Um, so that's three of us. Uh, no, actually that's four of us. Um, Joseph Satterfield. That's my brother. He handles like a lot of different things that I can't handle. Like he's basically like a liaison, and he's 
he tells me different business tactics that I should go by or what me and her should do. He's super crazy dope in music, so he has a crazy ear. And basically, um, that's the team. So um, uh, we basically met each other at, U at University of Toledo. I went there, graduated with marketing. Uh, um, my focus is digital marketing. Um, I started up uh, my own company called Just Us Fitness. I work out, um, I, I train people, had a workout sessions uh, with kids this summer um, uh, at my first days and everything like that. And I help out with queen team models. So basically I'm just here trying to maintain and <laughs> trying to figure out different things, trying to use my creative brain, my creative insight that I have and just keep stuff pushing. So. Really? One thing I wanted to add that he said, everybody that we're working with in NMP, not to say it is a requirement, but we all have college degrees, and that's something that we do push. We love the fact that we're all young, black, and educated. It's not something that people really see a lot of, especially in an industry like music, because a lot of the guys and women that are in it are, you know, just coming from their local cities and stuff. But it's something that we like to push, too, because it's not seen every day. And we think it's super important to be educated, especially college educated. So yeah. I just wanted to add that in. Oh, of course, that's <laughs> dope, especially as young black. Y'all is super yeah. young. Y'all mm -hmm. doing all of this. So y'all doing great. Thank so, you. Thank you. Of course. And Appreciate that. As NMP, what do you guys have? What do you guys have coming up? We heard about her. Do y'all have anything coming up as a group? Um, Actually, well, as a group, everything is each other's stuff. You know what I'm saying? So her stuff is my stuff. My stuff is her stuff. If I got connections with you, she going to be on it. She got connections. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, her stuff goes crazy. She just has some models um, in a music video. I ain't going to speak too much because it's not my music video, but um, they were looking super nice in the video it got booked by um one of one of the best artists to me cj mac uh he he's in the video that's all i would say about that but he's one of the artists in toledo that's in the video and it's it, the music video is going to go crazy um it's not our stuff but queen team models are in there so we got a little foot in there i think i think they caught me in the video too so i might be in the music video as well <laughs> doing some little crazy stuff but yeah so that's some stuff we got coming up but we just in the studio um Shout out to Dr. Eric Smith. He has a song coming up. Um, working on that. Got the music video uh, coming on the 11th. We're shooting the music video for that on the 11th. And then uh, other than that, Justin, he has some stuff coming up. We just shot some background photos. I mean, some cover photos for uh, his uh, song coming out pretty soon. Now, don't, you know, don't, don't get it. We ain't never killed nobody, but it's called Killed the Man. You know what I'm saying? The song is going crazy. So shout out to Justin. He got he has that coming out. And me and Trauma, we have a joint song coming out. It's crazy. Um, I'm really busy right now. So Trauma uh, and Trauma was just super busy. So she's going to have a lot of stuff coming out. She's about to wash y'all out for real. Y'all going to like it. And um, I'm going to have a couple of things coming out periodically. But mainly the artists, is push, the, the artists are pushing. Um, y'all see other people's stuff out right now, and it's looking great. Everybody in the city is going crazy, but NMP, we about to come out with some some heat, you know. Definitely be on the lookout mm -hmm. for, sure. for sure. Social media so we can follow. Stay tuned in. Mm -hmm. I am the Queen Chama, pretty much on everything. T H E Q U E E N C H I O M A. That's on TikTok. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, even as well, even though I don't use it like that. Um, and on YouTube, Queen Chama, which is my main platform. Yeah, yeah, y'all hear her. And um, I am the, just, no, I'm playing. I'm just, my name is just Justice Satterfield on everything, I'm pretty sure. But um, I think if you're looking for my workout stuff, it's just us fitness, you know. Oh, you said if anything's coming out soon, I have a um, fitness thing coming out. Uh, I train people. But in, you know, just to stay clean and stay safe, I'm switching to completely online training. So pretty soon, um, I'll have that dropping soon. So I'm just trying to figure out a couple of different kinks. And okay. yeah, I have online training and online meals with different shakes to help you drop weight, gain muscle, anything. So y'all tap into that. Add my Instagram, uh, Just Us Fitness Official. And yeah. It was a pleasure. I have fun today. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming and kicking it with us today. We'll tap in with y'all next week. Oh, yeah, we're going to be back. We'll be back for sure. Hey, I stay on your head like a weaver. And I'm the whole city gonna know what we want. They do what I say, but my name is not Simon. Fly like an eagle, Jason Peters, I'm the lineman. On fire like the Amazon, but I ain't in my prime yet. On fire like the Amazon, but I ain't in my prime yet.